that a lot of times people do. The kingdom of God is not in the dress codes that we have. The kingdom of God is not in the buildings that we build or the cars that we drive. But the kingdom of God is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's important to realize that the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Church, uh, as we shared with you all some time ago, and, and, and it, it is worth noting uh, that when you go back into right now before uh, the Lord was preparing Moses to go and minister to unto his people, but when, when Moses went down and brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, amen, you know, too often times when we look for God, we have just a, the wrong concept, amen, of looking for God because too often times, look, you know, people say that they're going to look up like they're looking up to heaven for God. When the scripture says the kingdom of God is within you, praise the Lord, the scripture says that Christ dwells in you. Now this is a difficult process to get us to accept that Christ dwells within. Amen. And the children of Israel, when they wanted to find God, they did not look up to heaven to find God, for He dwelt in the midst of His people. He dwelt in the tabernacle. He dwelt in the, in the, in the temple. His glory was upon the tabernacle. He, was, he rested there in a fire by night. Amen. In a cloud by day. His glory was upon the temple. Yes. So whenever somebody who on the far reaches of the camp wanted to see where God was, they looked into the middle of the camp. Amen. When they was on the south or the north, they looked into the middle of the camp. God dwelt in the midst of his people. And today, amen, they wanted, now those people wanted to have what you had. Amen. So this same God today, in a more acute, in a more defined, in a more real way, He dwells in you. Amen. He dwells in, come on somebody, Amen. He dwells in you. Amen. Christ Amen. in yes. you, the Amen. hope of glory. Amen. And our challenge is to understand that, that God dwells in this temple. Amen. 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 And, and the challenge is not only to understand it, but to stir up the gift yes. so that there can be not only a knowledge, but a revelation. Yes. Amen. And you know, they, they, uh, I, 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 I said that, you know, church, it, it is important for us to go beyond the place of believing to knowing. Amen. Because a lot of times we believe a thing, but do you know it? Amen. And, and, and here is the statement, that you believe what you've been taught or told if it comes from, from some reputable source. Amen. If you respect it, amen, and it's been taught to you or told to you, you will believe it. But you only know what you have experienced. Amen. Now, I, I, I believe, amen, and no, some folks believe that you can cook some good cornbread. Some folks, well, it's good. Anyway, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> some, some folks believe that you can cook some good adobo. Amen. Some folks believe, my God, some folks, all of us know, amen. Some folks believe that you can skewer some, I'm talking about, my God. But all of us here know, amen. That the cornbread is good, the adobo is good, and the skewer is good. Amen. See, because we experienced it. Amen. Church, the thing can nobody take away from you your experiences. And this is the power of faith. Faith don't leave you in a state of just academic, but faith brings you to a place of experiential. Amen. So that you are able to say, I know in I know in whom I have believed. I know. I've come to the place of I've gone beyond believing, and now I know. Yes. I've experienced some things now. I know some things about Jesus. I know that he will never leave me nor forsake me, that he will be with me even to the end of the age. Right. I know, amen, that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. I know that he will fight my battles and give me the victory. I have come to the place of knowing some things. Amen. So what it is, I'm not now, because 
situations are sometimes cyclical, up and down. Sometimes we are in the winter of life. Sometimes we are in the spring of life. Sometimes we are in the autumn of life. And sometimes we are in the summer of life. We go through seasons in the course of our life. It doesn't matter what the season is, I know some things that. Amen. Hallelujah. I could be in the winter of my, in, you know, the, the winter of a season in my life, and all of my trees are bare. Don't seem like I'm ever going to come up out of the mess that I'm in. But I've come to the place of knowing, my God, hallelujah, when my strength is down, my God is up. I'm back in my Bible and going home. <laughs> Church, I tell you, you got to come to this place of knowing. When you know these things, amen. Well, here it is, Moses found himself, amen, and in and, and such, a, such a birth that he had. Amen. Moses had a, 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 the anointing was upon his life from the time of his birth. Amen. God had called Moses to be the deliverer in Israel. God had called Moses, amen, to be one. Praise the Lord. Come on in here. God had called Moses to be one who would deliver his people. Amen. And because of such a high and holy calling, Moses and the church, let me tell you, it, you know, it's amazing. The devil is stupid. Amen. The devil is stupid. Because, amen. Church, praise the Lord. You can be assured that whenever God is going to is trying to bless you, the devil is going to try to mess up the blessing. And a lot of times he's trying to mess it up in his infancy. The devil want to stop it before it really get going good. Tired, you know, a lot of times, amen, you've been in the kingdom for a little while, the enemy going to bring all kind of hell in your life to try to get you, amen, to go back, amen, to whatever death, destructive ways you ever had. But the enemy don't know that the good work that God has begun in you, God's not going to let up off of it. Amen. The Lord will take you through a few things to show you, amen, that He is God. That He's going to fight your battle and give you the victory. That you can't abide God. That you can't make it. And it's going to be one of these days, as, as I've been sharing with a, a, a few folks, amen, sometimes church, when, when, we, when we make it to the mountaintop, we look back on the valley and say, Lord, you was, in, you was with me in such a rich way, I wouldn't even mind going back to let you just you know, deal with me in that way again. So church is something about coming to the place of knowing. Moses was born in such a state that the enemy tried to snuff him out at his birth. His mother had to hide him in a basket down in the Nile River. Pharaoh, being used by the devil, wanted to kill this boy. Amen. I'm talking about within the first few months of his birth. My God. Was it no, no different? The devil tried to kill Jesus in the first two years of his life. Amen. A lot of times, church, when you got something good, the devil want to destroy it before it's get going real good. But I want you all to know that you're going to grow up in the Lord. Amen. The reason the devil want to kill you is because you're going to do damage to the kingdom of God. Yes. My God. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, you can be like a friend. Just hang tight, Richard. We're going to get there. <laughs> amen. Moses, amen, when the, enemy, when the enemy tries to destroy you, it's nothing but a testament to what God has in you. Amen. If the devil, oh my God, if the devil could destroy you, that means God don't have nothing in you. But when the devil comes at you with his best shot and you still are left standing, you still got your hands lifted up and your mouth filled with praise. You can testify, my God, that God is working something in me that's much greater than the devil could ever try to destroy. So church, amen, you can be encouraged, amen, looking at the testimony.